Step 8. Creating the 3D script. Open the 3D script for editing. Type the following code into the beginning of the 3D script. Both if structures are the same as in the first part of the chapter. The difference lies in how the animation effect is achieved. In this case, what we do is we define a so-called cut plane in the 3D script of the object. The cut plane will cut off everything from the object above a plane located at a certain level and being parallel to the XY plane. The location of the cut plane will be dependent on the current frame number of the animation. We elevate the cut plane to its desired height using the ADDS command, ADDZ, with which we relocate the origin of the local coordinate system. The cut plane defined by the cut plane command will always be on the XY coordinate plane of the local coordinate system. We want the vertical position of the cut plane at beg underscore frame to be zero, and we want its value at end underscore frame to be 270. 270 because the skyscraper is 265 meters high. We want to make sure that no part of it is cut off by the time end underscore frame is reached in the animation. The number of frames that pass while the cut plane moves from zero height to 270 meters in height is the value given by end underscore frame minus beg underscore frame. From the above, we get that the cut plane must be raised parentheses 270 forward slash parentheses end underscore frame minus beg underscore frame end parentheses meters with each passing frame. So, parentheses 270, forward slash, parentheses end, underscore frame, minus beg, underscore frame, end parentheses, gives the unit change of the cut plane's height per frame. The value globe, underscore frame, underscore nr, minus beg, underscore frame, gives us how many frames have passed since the building started being built, or how many units of change happened in the height of the cut plane. On page 100 of the ARCHICAD GDL reference guide, you can find the description of the cut plane command. Although the cut plane command can have several parameters, we are now using its simplest, the syntax of which looks the following. This can be considered to be similar to an if-then structure in which all commands between the if and end if command are executed. In the case of the cut plane and cut end command pair, the cut operation will be performed on all GDL bodies generated between these two commands and only on those commands. So, if we want to cut the whole 3D model, we need to place a cut plane command before the command generating the 3D model and place a cut end command after those commands. This is why we placed the if-then structure containing the cut plane command at the beginning of the 3D script. We will also need to place a cut end command at the end of the 3D script. One more thing about the cut plane command is that it will always cut that portion of the 3D model which is above the XY plane in the position Z region of the local coordinate system. In our example, the portion of the 3D model above the cut plane will be cut and removed from view. If we mirrored the orientation of the z-axis using a MULZ-1 command, the portion of the 3D model below the cut plane would be cut and removed from view. Let's look at one more thing about the cut plane command and the command surrounding it. As you can see, an ADDS command precedes the cut plane command, and a DEL1 command follows it. The ADDS command is needed to elevate the cut plane to its desired position, but a DEL1 command is also needed to move the local coordinate system origin to where it was before the cut plane command. This is needed because the commands generating the 3D model follow, and those have the previous position of the local coordinate system as their origin. So the coordinate transformation preceding the cut plane command must be undone immediately after the cut plane command. Otherwise, it will affect other elements too, and they will be generated in an incorrect position in space. Type the following code at the very end of the 3D script. As you can see, 
Here is a cut end command, as mentioned before, but it is also in the same double if-then structure as the cut plane command. The reason for this is because the cut plane and the cut end commands come in pairs. If one is executed in the 3D script and the other is not, ARCHICAD will give an error message. Therefore, the cut end command must be executed always under the same conditions as the cut plane command it belongs to as a pair. Just think of the case where there was only a cut end command at the end of the 3D script without any conditions. In such a case, if the time underscore build parameter is off, the whole if then structure will not let the cut plane command be executed at the beginning of the script, but the cut end command will be executed at the end. The result will be an error message that there is a cut end command without a corresponding cut plane command. Save the changes you have made to the object and close the library part editing window. We are now finished with the modification of the object and are now ready to do the necessary steps to create the animation.